Good evening. Welcome to the January 9th, 2023 meeting of the Stillwater City Council. At this time, I will call the meeting to order and I'll ask that you all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a number of items on the consent docket. I think there's a couple, or at least one, we want to pull off of there. Item H, we're going to pull off of consent. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to pull off items C, D, and E, and F. C, D, E, and F. Yes. So A, B, and G will remain on consent. Is there recommended action from the council on those items. I move approval of those three items. Second. With motion and a second to approve A, B, and G on consent. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, those items are approved. Vice Mayor, you want to say a few words about uh, C, D, E, and F? I do. For those of you who haven't seen the consent docket, I wanted to give a shout out. I think Stacy Delano is here today. She's our director of our Stillwater Public Library. And when you have a librarian that brings in almost $86,000 in grant money, um, I want to do a shout out to you. Um, you're doing it for a combination of online checkout services and also working in partnership with Oklahoma State University's Afghan Resettlement and English Services to offer five people the opportunity to complete their high school diploma, which I think is amazing. So thank you for bringing those monies in. I know it's additional work. You have a great team that works with you, so congratulations. Do you have a recommended recommendation for the item? I move to recommend or to um, accept items C, D, E, and F on the consent docket. Second. We we'll have a motion to approve items C, D, E, and F from consent. Please vote. <coughs> the vote of five to zero, those items are approved. And just to echo our thanks to you, Stacey, and to your team at the library, that's uh, excellent services being provided. Thank you. Next up, we have item H from the consent docket, which is to approve a budget amendment reflecting receipt and appropriation of a $50,000 donation by Wilson Chevrolet to the Stillwater Fire Department for the purchase of extrication tools. We've got a number of representatives from our fire department and Mr. Wilson here. We wanted to take a second to say thank you. I don't know if you have a, you want to tell us any more about the extrication tools or anything special you want to let us know about, Chief? Since you're here. I mean. yeah. <laughs> Mayor Council, thank you for having me. We definitely want to thank the Wilson Auto Group for generous donation. It's going to help us replace some aging extrication tools and help us to have uh, just better capabilities to serve the community. So we can't thank them enough. This Excellent. is incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chief. You and I spoke this morning on TV 31, Chief, and one of the, the significant advantages is today we're using hydraulic equipment so we have lines going back to a truck and they can only go so far the new equipment is probably going to be battery powered so they can take it anywhere and do anything with it and it's just been much more flexible and it's, it's a great addition and again thanks to the wilson family and the wilson group for doing this for us absolutely so uh, wilson's have been a great supporter of our community in lots of different ways and this is uh, just another example of that and we appreciate appreciate the donation is there a motion to uh, accept this donation Council? So moved. We have a motion and a second to approve item H from consent. Please vote. Second. <laughs> oh, I didn't get a second. I just said we had a motion and a second. <laughs> With a vote of five to zero, that item is approved. I got you back. <laughs> kind of autopilot, you know? <laughs> do we want to do a recognition or take a picture? Let's do that. Mine? Mine here? Come on up. <laughs> All 
All right. Public comment on items not scheduled for public hearing. I don't think we have anybody signed up there. Uh, we will move to item six on the agenda under general orders. We have uh, an item to approve budget amendments allocating funds for the Stillwater Regional Airport. And Foster is here from the airport to let us know more about that. Good evening, Mayor and Councilors. Foster Bay K, Deputy Airport Director. Now at the midpoint of the FY23 fiscal year, the airport department has concluded that the following accounts are in need of mid-year adjustments. The first is our airport fuel for resale expenditure and revenue accounts. As a wholesaler of fuel, we use these to buy and sell fuel to our fixed-based operator. Our budget shortfall at this point in the year is a combination of a 14% increase in fuel sold, as well as a 37% increase in average price per gallon at the, from this point last year. In addition, a few accounts are in need of mid-year adjustments due to the following reasons for each below. Contract for services. Our new security program that came with larger daily American Airlines planes have required more extensive background checks and fingerprinting software. Initial expenditure was unknown, but after completing a, a complete rebadging of our airport in the past few months, we now have better data and a need to adjust to complete the fiscal year. Vehicle fuel and oil, account that is used to fuel all fleet vehicles and equipment. With the purchase of new larger snow equipment, increase in roving security patrols, and higher gas prices, this has strained this account. Contingency. This account has been depleted due to a wave of expenditures such as security upgrades, emergency repairs, and right-sizing our insurance policy. Our revenue accounts have been trending higher than projected at this point in the fiscal year, and budget projections can be increased to offset the increases in expenditures. Therefore, to summarize, the proposed budget amendments uh, can be summarized as the following. Increase in aviation gas for resale revenue and expenditure accounts by $1.5 million each. And then second, an increase in the contract for services account by $1,000, an increase in the vehicle fuel and oil account by $2,189, and the increase in the contingency account by $3,499. Again, this is offset by the increase in the following two revenue accounts. The first is the ID access card by $3,189, and the increase in ad sales by $3,499. No additional city or outside funds are required to complete this. Thank you, Foster. Counselors, any questions? Very uh, succinct summary of uh, mm -hmm. a lot of different financial stuff. We appreciate that. Um, do you have a recommendation for us? Yeah, recommendation is the motion to approve the attached revenue and expenditure budget amendments for $1.5 million for aviation gas uh, for resale and $6,688 for increases to expenditures for contract for services, vehicle fuel and oil, and contingency in addition to the increase in ID access card revenue and ad sales revenue. Thanks, sir. Counselors? Motion to accept staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the recommendation. Please vote. We vote five to zero. Those items are approved. Thank you, Foster. All right, at this time, I'm going to move that we recess City Council uh, so that we can move on to our other agendas, and then we'll come back to City Council after that. So I'll make a motion to recess City Council at this time. Second. We have a motion and a second to recess City Council before item seven. Please vote. We vote a five to zero. City Council will now be in recess. At this time, I will call to order the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting for January 9th, 2023. Uh, we have three items on this consent docket. Trustees? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have motion and second to approve consent. Please vote. Hold on a second. We're going to try that one more time. Here we go. Sorry, I'm moving a little fast. <laughs> With a vote of five to zero, the consent docket is approved. Takes us to item 5A. Consider authorizing the SUA chair to sign a letter of binding commitment for the South Sewer Interceptor and Miscellaneous Wastewater Project loan in the amount of $10.5 million. Mr. David Barth is here for more information on this. Yeah, good evening, <coughs> David Barth. Uh, good evening, trustees. David Barth with City Engineering. Let me get here to the beginning of my presentation. i uh, just here tonight to discuss the uh, final stages for funding the South Interceptor Replacement and Miscellaneous Wastewater Project. Um, this is a, uh, a shot that I took, if you can see that, well, maybe you can't see that. Um, I can see it. I was hoping that other people could see this. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is a shot that I took last uh, Thursday evening. Um, we had one of those amazing Oklahoma sunsets, and I just thought I would uh, get a picture to show you that pro construction is, is progressing. Um, I'm standing just southwest of the wastewater treatment plant. 
uh, looking to the west and the contractors laid out several thousand feet of the uh, four foot diameter fiberglass reinforced pipe that we're installing uh, as, as the south interceptor. So um, anyway, I just wanted to show you some progress there. Uh, this next slide is just a reminder of the project location. Um, there again, this is uh, 19th Avenue up here to the north and Brush Creek Road on the east side of the slide. This is our wastewater treatment plant. And when I was taking that photo, I was standing right above the number 10, let's say, um, on the proposed 10 inch sewer line, and I was looking to the west. This is a repeat slide that you saw approximately a year ago when we went through the loan process. Um, and in March of last year, uh, trustees uh, approved a resolution for reimbursement and a resolution to apply for the loan. Uh, then subsequently, we applied for the loan, gained environmental approval, and in August, uh, we were approved for a $6 million loan uh, from OWRB, and at that time, we were um, going to use $5 million, uh, a congressional directive that we had received from Senator Inhofe's office, or through Senator Inhofe's office, um, uh, to pay for part of this project, and then we were going to use the other, you know, the $6 million that we were approved um, from OWRB to pay for the remainder of the project. Since then, we have found out that we're, we're still promised that $5 million congressional directive, but it's being administered through the EPA, and the details uh, for applying and receiving those funds has not been finalized yet. And since we've already started construction, we need to you know, make sure that we're not holding up our contractor. And so we are planning to use that $5 million congressional directive for a future sewer project. Um, and that we're working on identifying and, and making sure that, uh, you know, that we'll be ready to do so. Um, but we needed to go ahead and, and make sure we were continuing on with this project. So we went back to OWRB, and in December we were approved for an additional $4.5 million. Um, so bringing the total uh, loan amount to $10.5 million. And uh, our co construction contract is $9.675 million, but we allowed for a contingency and, and some other things there. So. Um, tonight, uh, like you can see at the, the, the bottom of this process, the letter of binding commitment and resolution are the final two things to, um, to finalize the loan. The loan terms, again, there's our loan amount of $10.5 million. The interest rate is 2.93% for the next 30 years. And we will receive a $1 million in loan forgiveness. And um, I'm not exactly sure why that is. There's a program, maybe it's COVID-related. Um, but we will receive a million dollars in loan forgiveness. At some point in the future? It, yes. Um, and then also, uh, just this is another photo of, that I took the other night. This is an eight foot diameter manhole that's um, sitting there waiting to be placed in the ground. They pour a concrete base or ballast at the bottom. Um, anyway, just again, a really kind of cool photo at that time of the day. So with that, um, Let's see if I've covered everything. Yeah, so before the loan can be closed, the SUA must accept the loan, um, and the SUA chair must sign the letter of binding commitment. Um, the acceptance of the loan happens by resolution, which is uh, later on in your agenda and later on in the city council agenda. So uh, before I give you my recommendation, do you have any questions? Trustees? Mm -hmm. i just like to clarify sometimes when we talk about these projects, we use terms that most people don't use. When we say the sewer interceptor, we're talking about a huge diameter pipe that carries sewage yes. from all the small pipes in people's neighborhoods and homes and takes it to the sewage treatment plant. Exactly. This, this pipe carries 80% of the wastewater that the wastewater treatment plant receives. So that includes, you know, western, northern, a lot of western and, and southern still water, all of the OSU campus. Um, so 80% of the wastewater that we treat comes through this pipe. And this pipe should last us 80 to 100 years. Seems it's a, a very important part of our uh, infrastructure, our wastewater infrastructure. Very sure. Uh, and I know this council likes photos, but it's really nice to see photos of it actually occurring. So yeah, thank yeah. you. Plus the sunset. <laughs> so what is your recommendation for us on 5A? Whoops. Uh, staff recommends a motion to authorize the SUA chair to sign the letter of binding commitment. Trustees? Move to approve staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the signing of the letter. Please vote. That item is approved with a vote of five to zero. 
And then item 6A is the resolution, uh, resolution SUA 2023-1, which is a resolution authorizing a loan from the Oklahoma Water Resources Board in the principal amount of $10,500,000, authorizing the issuance of a series 2023 clean water SRF promissory note in the principal amount of said loan, approving and authorizing the execution of a loan agreement for a clean water SRF loan and a security agreement pertaining to said promissory note, ratifying and confirming a lease agreement and operation and maintenance contract with a sales tax agreement with the City of Stillwater, approving and authorizing payment of fees and expenses, approving various covenants and authorizing the execution of other documents pertaining to said loan and containing other provisions relating thereto. Further questions about the resolution, Council? And trustees? Is there a motion on the item? Motion to adopt resolution number SUA 2023-1. Second. For motion and a second to adopt the resolution, please vote. That item is approved with a vote of five to zero. Any reports from the officers or the board of the SUA? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn SUA. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, the Stillwater Utilities Authority is now adjourned. At this time, I will call to order the Stillwater Economic Development Authority meeting for January 9th, 2023. We have one item on the consent docket. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. Motion to second to approve consent. Please vote. Consents approved with a vote of five to zero. General orders, item 5A. Consider Stillwater Reinvestment Plan Downtown Campus Link Project Plan Implementation Policy Committee's recommendation regarding the Progressive Development LLC's request for assistance in development financing for property located at 923 South Main pursuant to the reinvestment plan. And Mr. Brady Moore. Good evening, trustees. Brady Moore on behalf of the city manager's office. And tonight we're excited to bring to you another TIF project from our downtown campus link. Um, Corey Williams, the owner of Progressive Development Corporation LLC, is the developer for this project. He is here tonight, and before I have him come up here and speak to you about the redevelopment, I'll quickly go over a few of the project details and the recommendation from the Citizen Implementation Committee. The project is a complete redevelopment of the 7,000 square foot building at 923 South Main Street, along with a new 1,000 square foot outdoor dining space. The tenants for this project will be two new businesses to Stillwater, a popular restaurant that began in Automobile Alley of Oklahoma City, and that's Hatch um, Early Mood Food is their tagline, and then also uh, becoming kind of a nationally known little bakery, a Roundhouse Bakery is considering relocating to Stillwater. Um, the purchase price of the building was 355000 in 2022. Um, esti estimated revenue, uh, sorry, renovation expenses of $2.75 million and furniture and fixtures of 500000 for a total development cost of $3.6 million. On the application, the developer requested $525,000 in TIF assistance, uh, this being a significant impact um, project. The TIF 3 Implementation Committee met on December 19th um, to hear this project and the committee voted 6 to 0 in approval. Um, their recommendation was for the total amount of 525000 to be paid in arrears um, and to include 2% of the city's undated, undedicated sales tax. I'll now invite uh, Mr. Williams up here to tell you more about the project and then I'll come back to answer any questions that you have and kind of look at financial projections. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. And Brady, thank you guys for having me here this evening. I'm glad to be back. Um, I think before I get into the overall uh, discussion regarding this particular building, I'll update you on some prior stuff. Uh, we received our CO for Stone Cloud uh, back in June of this, I guess now last year, of 22. And uh, my understanding, and, and I'll let you confirm with city staff that it's exceeding expectations uh, for the revenue projections that we brought to you uh, once upon a time. So I'm pretty excited about that, and I'm excited about the, uh, the reception it has received in the community. Uh, I was before you with another operator January, maybe February of... Um, 
of this last year uh, with regard to TXMZ, and that project is dead. Uh, I terminated the lease, and no city money was used, and luckily none of my money was used. <laughs> Um, so we are holding that building and we are uh, currently shopping it to other qualified operators and we're pretty excited about some of the prospects that are associated with that but um, it became clear to me that there was a substantial chance that uh, city money would be involved uh, the developers money would be involved and the project may not get to completion because of some other commitments that the operator had and Having sat in a similar seat as y'all's and recognize the fiduciary duty, the last thing I want to do is have to come to you with egg on my face and, and say, we lost some of your money. And so I thought it was better that the operator and I part ways, and, and they agreed, and we have done so. So that building is back in the, the mix. And the good news is that because no city money was used, uh, that, that money went back into um, the bowl or the account, whatever it might be, uh, the hold has been released on it, and it is is up for um, future development. So, there's the update on on what's going on. Uh, now on to this. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, acquired the old Uncle Mike space, or if you've been here long enough, you recognize it as Napa. Uh, back before they built their building out on Perkins Road. Uh, whenever I was a kid, which is the only time I went in that building. Uh, mm -hmm. It was Napa, and we went in there a lot because we were always using duct tape and bailing wire to hold our vehicles together, and they <laughs> sold it pretty reasonable. But um, it is now, after demolition, a very beautiful building on the inside, and we're very excited about it. I get to stand in it and stare and see where all of the original windows were, where the original storefront was, and ironically, it started life as a hatchery. So uh, I feel like it's almost coming full circle. It was the McConkie hatchery uh, way, 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 way back in the day. And so uh, it is a, as Brady said, a complete redevelopment of the, of the building really from the top up. The roof will be getting ripped off. Uh, we'll leave the original decking, but that's about the only thing that will stay. We'll do four inches of rigid foam insulation and a TPO roof, just like we did over at Stone Cloud. Uh, and then this building will get a solar field that goes all the way down the side of it. It is a 50 kW uh, solar field. It is not enough to offset the entire footprint, uh, but it is enough to do about 25 to 30 percent. I actually think it'll be higher because Hatch is only open until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so some of the load factor will be reduced, but we're pretty excited about that. Uh, and the tenants, we're super excited about it. Roundhouse Bakery, I can't say enough good things. If you haven't heard of them, please go to Stillwater Farmer's Market and participate in some of their items. Uh, they do a fantastic job. They are nationally recognized. Uh, Kayla has done amazing things using very clean ingredients and very clean methodology. And uh, I think that you've probably heard this before, but kind of the new outlet for retail is experiential retail. And Kayla is going to be bringing that to downtown Stillwater in this space where she will have a training facility uh, attached to it. So not only for social gatherings, but for bringing in other chefs to train them in the methods that she's using. So uh, we're excited about that. She ships cake boxes all over the U.S. Uh, because her cakes are gorgeous and they're delectable and they'll be doing um, actually a coffee service and an organic icy service and a whole bunch of different things there. Um, Hatch is a provision concepts uh, concept. They're out of Oklahoma City, started by two, I believe they were betas, uh, from OSU. Uh, and Jeff Dixon is the uh, sole proprietor of that now. They own the concepts, Broadway 10, Hatch, uh, Sidecar, Chicken Foot, Bira Bira, uh, there's a Bandy's Barbecue and a couple others, and they just announced that they're opening a new hatch, Broadway 10 and Sidecar in the Rose Creek redevelopment area. So we're excited to be bringing them to town. I think um, I have yet to be in a hatch elsewhere and not seen somebody from Stillwater. <laughs> uh, and so my hope is that we'll be able to keep them here. Um, development costs are insane. Uh, and I want to address two things. First off, Stone Cloud would not be here but for uh, the TIF assistance that we received. And I hope that you are enjoying um, seeing kind of the fruits of that investment and watching the uh, payments come into the coffers to help retire that indebtedness. Um, and I can say with some certainty that these two operators will not have the space that I have promised them or that we have discussed but for an investment from the city uh, through the TIF. 
Uh, I know a lot of people have already seen the hatch announcement. It's out there. You've probably seen the roundhouse announcement. It's out there. Um, because of how TXMZ went, I went back to my original model of development. If you remember, whenever we came before you for StoneCloud, I had uh, complete architectural plans and civil engineering documents in front of me. And I spent all of my own money on that. And we had some certainty that we were going to move forward. When I came before you with uh, TXMZ, I had some pretty pictures and an idea. And the operator was in charge of building out that space uh, using some of my money, some of your money, uh, and some of their money. That failed to launch. And uh, so we we're back to the original structure where we have done the civil engineering, we have done the structural engineering. I have complete plans. If you've talked to development services, you know that the permit for Roundhouse has already been issued. And uh, I think review for hatch permit should be completed this week. And so then you start thinking to yourselves, maybe I don't pass the but for test. I assure you, it doesn't take very much effort to eliminate $500,000 worth of details from a project like this. And we can do it pretty quickly. But I don't think it will deliver the product or have the impact that I think downtown Stillwater deserves and what we are looking for in order to pivot this area south of 9th that really has not had a whole lot of pedestrian traffic and a lot less auto traffic since Granny's left the area and moved up to 7th Street. And so we are asking for an investment. We want to make this a killer project. One of the things that you don't see in the paperwork of the documentation is that we've secured the parking lot to the east so that the city doesn't have to address parking. And we are addressing parking because I believe that we share some responsibility in that. It comes at a cost. It's not in this package anywhere. It's just part of overall development. And I hope to integrate that into a, um, a conversation we have about 907 South Main, which is the giant albatross that's been sitting there for about 40 years. I have. Um, we're about halfway through using some stillwater connections uh, with the overall schematics of making that a hotel, restaurant, rooftop bar space. So anyway, all that being said, I will stand for questions. I hope I addressed the things that I was supposed to address. And, and if I didn't, I, sh I assume that you'll let me know. Thank you, Corey. Trustees, do you have questions? I just have a comment. I appreciate uh, the way you approached us with this and sort of acknowledged the uh, the failure of the prior project and, and put that right up front. And um, I think you've developed a reputation for doing quality pro projects in this town, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate it. I want to say thank you for starting to provide an anchor for the South Main past 9th Street that I think has needed to happen for a long time. Um, those buildings have a wonderful character, and I think the idea of your businesses going in there are, are fabulous. Um, Roundhouse Bakery, you're right, is great, and it's the third business from Mary Main Street that's decided to go bricks and mortar, so we're even more excited about the success of, of Kayla and that, so thank you for what you're doing. No, thank you. I mean, but for Kayla being successful at Mary Main and, and Silver's Farmer's Market, this doesn't happen, and I don't think I said that Roundhouse is currently located in um, the hinterlands of Perkins, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and so they are super, super successful at the same time violating the rules of location <laughs> for business. You know, they are sought after. And so we're excited to have them. And those businesses that are operating currently on 10th, I think are excited to have yes. them in close yep. proximity. I've talked Absolutely. with Sarah who might be perceived a little bit as a competitor and she's excited to have the additional capacity in the area and the additional traffic. So my goal is honestly that we will tie 10th street all the way around and, and give people um, a reason to walk from, from 10th on the east side of Maine all the way over to Block 34 uh, once it's completed. Good. I'm also really grateful for your attention to this part of our community, and I'm also really always happy to see that you're working with Oklahoma um, companies and Oklahoma uh, proprietors to, to bring businesses here that are more local to our community. I think that's really it's really cool to see that we're kind of organically growing within our community or at least from within our state with some of the, the folks that you're bringing in and working with. I think that's um, really special and not, not always the case when we're looking at redevelopment projects. They're very tricky and can be complicated. And I know um, with the current financial and cost of construction materials and all the things, it's, it's even harder to make these deals 
go and to look at these projects in a way that, um, that the way that you're doing it in a creative way that makes them happen. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're, we're looking like these tenants are quality. We're very excited about them. And I can say with relative certainty that come July of, of this year, actually, this space will look entirely different. And hopefully by extension, that south end of Maine. Great catalyst. Uh, it's exactly what we wanted the TIF to do. Yes. Right. This is yep. right. this is exactly, exactly what what we're shooting for was redevelopment of these spaces that have been underutilized, um, and bringing in truly successful concepts from other places and, and putting them here in Stillwater and and, and seeing those go. And I noticed uh, I think I shared this on Instagram or somewhere, but the number of pours for the year at Stillwater Tap Room exceeded the number of pours at Stone Clouds Oklahoma City Tap Room. Their established one, and so um, that's been ex extremely successful. And you mentioned Good Little Eater. I know they've had uh, a, a wonderful increase in, in terms of dealing with folks who have come from around the corner from the tap room. And so expanding businesses in this area uh, is a tide that rises, lifts all ships, and and um, just a, a great project. Looking forward to, to seeing it done. So appreciate you being here. Um, I did have one question. I know you mentioned putting that money from the TXMZ. Um, project back into the bucket. Um, the committee here recommended arrears. I think your ask was to get some of that um, not in arrears. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. I am. Um, I, I should have learned after 10 years of having a microphone to be really careful of what I say. But uh, during the TIFF review committee, I, I made a, a truthful statement and one that I'd like to take back. Uh, <laughs> it stands as, as true. I said. I can do this project in arrears, and that is absolutely true. Um, if, the, if the council or if the authority decides that it's appropriate that everything be in arrears, um, then so be it. And, and we have been working. Uh, my local lender is Exchange Bank, and they have been for years, and I, I try to stay loyal to that. You're talking about recirculating dollars in the community. We're trying to do that. And I've asked um, Andrea, the market president, hey, if we get a word of this money and the, and the council and the TIF review committee decide to do that in arrears, can you lend on it? And they are working through the mechanisms on which to lend on it. Uh, it is challenging. You know, um, larger institutions have a public finance arm that are used to doing things like this, but I really don't want to shop it to Bank of America or one of those, those lenders because I'd rather, if I've got to pay interest, that I pay interest into somebody who's also supporting philanthropic uh, endeavors in our community and, and other businesses. And so um, I, I say all of that to come to the end point. Uh, these monies are most helpful up front, obviously. The city of Stillwater can borrow at a lot lower rate. I just saw your interest rate up on the board, and I have to tell you, immediate jealousy. <laughs> uh, and so I, you know, I think I've, I've had side conversations with counselors previous about you know, we should really consider now that we are starting to gain some critical mass in the TIF about issuing some bonds. Uh, they're, they're, that is a way, a mechanism that, that TIFs are financed so that some of that money can be available because if you've noticed our, our at least my uh, presentations, they've gotten more aggressive as we go because we are doing bigger and bigger projects and, and the one three doors down from this will be massive. Um, before I can ever swing a hammer, I'll have a quarter million dollars in design work. And so, um, if it's important to the council and it's important to the committee that these, that every single dollar, taxpayer dollar, gets dedicated to these projects, then I would ask the committee to award at least a partial sum of this money up front, because otherwise, I am, I am paying mezzanine financing. Andrea will give me the loan on this. Exchange Bank will give us the loan on it, but at a cost. And that cost is something that I take out of the overall project costs. And so it is something that doesn't go into the brick and mortar to do the thing that we're trying to do. And so um, my presentation to the committee was over at the time that they decided to award everything in arrears. And in talking with city staff, I said, will there be an opportunity to address that? So. What I'm asking is that, that we split the difference and that the council uh, consider um, half of the money up front and half of the money in an arrear situation. Um, that's a little bit less interest that I have to pay over the life of the loan on the project. Uh, again, 
If the council decides not to do that, uh, or if the authority decides not to do that, uh, I would appreciate the overall investment, at least in arrears, and we'll figure it out beyond that. A, a reasonable ask and a reasonable explanation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And we're, we're at the point here, and I, any, any further questions for Corey? I'll ask Brady to just come back up and kind of give us the breakdown and kind of where we are with yeah. the situation, because we're not approving a development agreement or anything at this point, correct? That's correct. Yep. So tonight we just kind of need your guidance, a conversation of uh, on, on the support of the project and the, um, you know, the issue of upfront funding um, or payment in arrears. As Corey mentioned with TXMZ, with that 340000 that was kind of on hold for that project, coming back to the pot of that original million that uh, CETA, um, through that resolution last year from an SUA loan of the million dollars, there, there was 35000 left in that account, and then you add the three forty from TXMZ, so that brings a balance of 375000 available for upfront funding. That, because that, when we approved the TXMZ project, we did award it as upfront pro funding at that point, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. And so tonight, we're just um, looking, and I have a motion when we get to that, but just the, the authorizing the city manager and staff to uh, work with progressive de development to get into a redevelopment agreement. The term sheet will bring back to you based on the conversation tonight. Sure. Okay. Uh, trustees, any questions for Brady in terms of the process and where we're at right now? So what's your recommendation for us, Brady? The uh, motion is to direct staff to enter into a redevelopment agreement with Progressive Development Corp. LLC and authorize the general manager and legal counsel to negotiate, finalize, and execute the terms of the redevelopment agreement for the restaurant and bakery at 923 South Main Street. Trustees, um, I'm just going to actually move from the chair on this one because I, I want to make sure what, at least what I, my motion would be would be to, to authorize staff to, to enter into these negotiations um, and uh, with, with the idea of using at least that, that existing money from the previous project as potentially a, an upfront um, funding for this project. So my, my motion would be to authorize staff to do that, including... Um, using negotiating around those terms that that we could use okay. at least that portion and as i understood corey's ask he's asking for half of 525 which would be 262.5 up front i think he's asking for at least half is the way i heard it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think he asked for all of it originally yeah. <laughs> i mean i i think you know the upfront financing piece of this is uh clearly better for the projects, right? I mean, That's if right. we want these projects to get done, being able to fund them up front is, is um, the best way to do that. Uh, the problem becomes, well, where do we get that money up front, right? Um, Mr. Williams mentioned uh, bond, actually creating bonds out of this TIF to, to create that funding up front. Uh, what we've done to this point is that we've used some of our available reserves and sort of bond, loaned it to ourselves. And, you know, we get to a point where we can't do that anymore. Right. And that's right. one of the reasons we've sort of paired back and said, well, we don't really have much upfront funding anymore. Uh, I, my sense of this is it's, it works better for the project. It gives us a better opportunity of this, of this uh, succeeding. Um, and if we had already approved that, that level of funding for, for a project that uh, unfortunately didn't make it through, um, then it, it, to me, makes sense that we would, we would use that money again for upfront funding um, and, and authorize the staff to, to have those conversations and sort of figure out what the best number is. Mm -hmm. So, that, I hope that motion's clear. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second to authorize the staff to enter into redevelopment agreement pursuant to the staff's recommendation, including uh, with the option of providing some upfront financing in the project. Please vote. It's approved with a vote of five to zero. Thanks, Brady, and to the staff for the work on this one. Thanks, Corey, for all of your work for the community. and. Looking forward to another uh, exciting redevelopment. Okay. Any reports from the officers or the board of the S uh, of CETA? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn CETA. Please vote.
With a vote of 5 0, Stillwater Economic Development Authority is now adjourned. At this time, I will reconvene the Stillwater City Council meeting at item 7 on the agenda. And item 7A is a resolution uh, related to the previous discussion of the sewer loan. It's resolution CC 2023 1. Excuse me, a resolution approving action taken by the Stowater Utilities Authority authorizing the issuance of its promissory note in the principal amount of $10,500,000 to the Oklahoma Water Resources Board, ratifying and confirming a lease agreement and operation and maintenance contract and a sales tax agreement between the city and the authority and containing other provisions relating thereto. Questions on the resolution or motion? Motion to adopt resolution number CC 2023 1. Second. Move a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, that resolution is adopted. All right, that takes us to item eight, which is appointments to the Sorter Housing Authority. Um, I actually received comment from someone who had submitted or was wanting to submit an application for that board, and so I'm going to put that off to our next meeting to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to get those applications in. Uh, that term is not over until. November or February so we've got another meeting we can push that to so I don't know that we need a motion to do that we'll bring that back to our next uh, our next agenda that takes us to item nine reports from officers and boards uh, anything Ms. Carley Mr. McNichol yes sir thank you um, his council and the trustees are certainly aware out of a number of major projects uh, underway in Stillwater a priority project is water projects and we've kind of lumped that into one term which includes the call pipeline raw water storage and water treatment facility uh, one of the things that i think has kind of shocked people as we've uh, discussed these items over the last couple of years is the fact that we provide water to roughly seventy-three thousand people in several different counties and that is in the form of raw water in some cases and finished water in others and uh, it's no surprise to you because again we've we've had study sessions we've had a lot of presentations to council and much of our water infrastructure is approximately 40 to 50 years old and in need of repair and new construction currently staff and uh, the mayor fortunately uh, are meeting with state and federal legislators and federal agencies to find funding to address these necessary and much needed water projects some of the things that we're hearing is that, that well, y'all talk about this so much, there must be a problem. Um, the water's fine, passes all water quality uh, requirements. Um, we do not currently have a problem with the pipeline. Uh, what we're trying to do is prevent a problem in the future uh, with these projects that we're talking about. And if anybody would like to uh, have more information on that, uh, please give me a call. Glad to discuss it. Thanks for uh, yeah, mentioning that because it has been there have been a lot of discussions. There's a lot of conversations happening, a lot of work happening by city staff, um, and and a lot of money that needs to be procured in order to get these projects done. And it is part of just sort of the natural. We're, we're talking about ten million dollars to make sure that we have a sewer line that can carry wastewater for the next eighty years. Uh, this is basically the same thing, except it's about ten times as much money, and uh, it's the other. The beginning of the water system instead of the end of it and um, I, I've been impressed with what staff has done so far and the amount of work uh, we've had calls with federal agencies and, and um, representatives and we've got uh, more stuff set up over the next several weeks so uh, certainly leaving no stone unturned when it comes to finding uh, the available resources to make that project happen and um, I, I have every faith that we will uh, we will get what we need and we will make sure the city has uh, a sustainable and, and reliable water source uh, for the next 50 to, to 80 years as well. So thank you for your work there, Norman. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yes, the city is accepting applications for a citizen representative to serve on the reinvestment plan implementation policy committee. This committee focuses on the Stillwater Downtown Campus Link project plan. So if you tuned into earlier conversation, um, that would be part of this process. The committee reviews applications for compatibility with the project plan in the City of Stillwater Land Development Code and standards. They evaluate applications and make recommendations regarding the eligibility of public financial assistance to the Stillwater Economic Development Authority. For more information and to apply online, go to stillwater.org slash citizensboards. 
Very important board. Yes. We've just been talking about them tonight, and we appreciate all the work that they do. And um, anybody who wants to volunteer, please sign up. Councilor Hawkins. Uh, another opportunity for involvement. If you would like to get involved in your local government, we have an opening on the Board of Adjustment. The board consists of five members and is empowered by city code to conduct hearings and render decisions on matters of appeals, variances, and special exceptions to the zoning ordinance. The board is considered to be quasi-judicial in that its decisions can only be overturned by district court. The term is for three years. For more information and to apply online, go to stillwater.org, I'm sorry, stillwater.org forward slash citizen boards. Excellent. Thank you. Councilor Jalowski. The Stillwater Fire Department encourages residents who live outside city limits, but within the Stillwater Fire Department's response area to purchase a rural fire service contract for 2023. These $100 contracts ensure that response fees for each fire incident on a contracted property will not exceed $2,000. All collected fees go toward training, rescue tools, and other fire equipment. You can find out more at visitstillwater.org slash fire um, to download an application. Excellent, thank you. Councilor Clark. Stillwater Community United will host its annual unity event to commemorate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on Sunday, January 15. The event begins at 7 p.m. at the Stillwater Community Center. Also, the annual unity march will be, with OSU will be held on Monday, January 16, beginning at 2 p.m. All residents are encouraged to join both events. City offices will be closed in observance of the holiday on January 16, which is Monday, but trash and recycling will be collected as usual. And unfortunately, I will be out of town and will miss those events. They are, they are great events. They do a lot of, uh, a lot of folks have been involved in doing that and, and they've been great over the last few years. The weather should be nice this year for, for the March. So i uh, looking forward to, to, to seeing folks out there on Monday. I have a couple things. Uh, one, many thanks to all who served the last few weeks over the holiday season to ensure Mary Main Street was successful, even though our sort of pending construction on Block 34 uh, <laughs> and some temporary transitions were made this year. So uh, big thanks to Vice Mayor Zanotti, to Shannon Williams Daniels and their leadership with this annual economy boosting, memory making holiday event. Thank you to Stephanie Kinder with the Stoller Community Center and everyone else who made this year's festivities possible. I will also just remind everyone that the City of Stillwater is seeking service-minded team members to join us and embrace our standards of excellence. If you're interested in applying for one or more of our open positions, and there are several, uh, please go to stillwater.org slash employment. Applications can be submitted by 5 p.m. on the closing date listed uh, on each listing. At this time, I'm going to hand the floor back to the Vice Mayor for another um, bit of news that she has for us. I do. Um, I would like to say thank you to the Stillwater community. This will be my last um, meeting to serve as your Vice Mayor. Um, but I'm excited to say that I get to serve Stillwater in another way. Um, I have accepted a position um, with the Stillwater Chamber as their CEO. And so as that um, moves forward, I do need to resign my position here. It's a little bit earlier than I had anticipated. Um, hopefully with elections coming up, um, seat will be filled. I am so proud of the work the council has done and who I've been involved with over the last, gosh, almost eight years of doing this. I'm proud of this community. I love it. And I'm excited about this new opportunity and uh, appreciate everyone's support and uh, I'm moving forward. Well, we're very excited for you. Thank you. Uh, and very disappointed to have you leave the council. Uh, this has been a, um, a wonderful period of service by uh, Vice Mayor Zanotti uh, over the last almost eight years. You and I sat in the front row here and stood up and interviewed for this position <laughs> uh, in, I think that was May of 2015, 2015, right? yeah. Um, and the council at the time made the uh, excellent choice of selecting <laughs> Elaine to the, to the chair that was open at the time. Um, and ever since, you've provided fantastic service to our community um, with not just your work here on the council, but your extracurricular activities in Mary Main Street and um, other economic development work and, and just community involvement. Uh, it's been uh, a pleasure to serve with you on the council. You. We'll have um, some more for you in the upcoming weeks <laughs> uh, to recognize you for that. But um, it's, uh, it's exciting to, to know that we continue to be able to work with you on the chamber. Absolutely. Uh, we'll have you here at this podium That's on a right. regular basis, uh, <laughs> updating us on your work at the, the chamber as well. So um, I think they made an excellent choice in that hire and um, 
I would just, on behalf of the council, although other folks may want to chime in here, um, and behalf of everyone here in the community, uh, thank you so much for your dedicated service to the Stillwater, uh, uh, <laughs> the Stillwater <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, the Stillwater <laughs> City Council, and the Chamber of Commerce from here on out. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I would like to thank you for your service here for eight years, and you've been a valuable part of the city council. And I've only been on council a year, but I've observed you for eight, and you've been a terrific city councilor. And the, the, the passion and the vision you brought has been an important part of the success of council over that time. Thank you for your service, and we look forward to having you on the chamber. I would just ditto that. I know when I um, um, thought about running for the council, you were the first person I called. Um, you've always... Um, made every, every any of us that came in made us feel very welcome and and helped and and shared your knowledge and and so i appreciate that and have always appreciated serving with you we just couldn't ask for a better champion for our community i'm just so grateful that i had an opportunity to have such a front row seat to it and that our community will get to continue to benefit from your advocacy and just your energy for everyone that does business and lives here. Um, you truly are such a, such a role model um, for our community and we're really grateful for all that you do. Mayor, if I may. Please. Um, I've watched all of you and thank all of you on occasion for your service to the community. Um, during your tenure and many of the people sitting at this podium now, things have not been particularly fun. There was some uh, <laughs> strife for uh, a period of time and a thing called COVID and uh, a lot of discussion. But um, I just want to say that uh, you, you served with poise and compassion and grace and uh, that was uh, greatly appreciated by the staff members that support you. So thank you. And to all of you, for that same. <laughs> I'd also like to add that, that you were the first person to reach out to me and say, let's sit down and go have some coffee and talk when I joined council. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if everybody else had the same experience or not, but I appreciated that very much. Yeah, um, building relationship is one of mm -hmm. Elaine's strong suits. And, and uh, again, one of the reasons that she's going to do so well in her, her next position, in your next position, I'm talking it's very odd to sit next to you and speak <laughs> about you. Um, yeah. <laughs> You'll be fantastic in that role. Thank, so. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, and we'll, I think, the 24th. Did you tell me the 24th is the reception? January 24th. Uh, to is, to yes. welcome you to the chamber. Yep. Uh, I would invite uh, everyone in the community who uh, both to uh, thank Elaine for her service here and to welcome her uh, and her new role as the chamber. That would be a good good place to do that. So, Anything further, council? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn Elaine Zanotti's final meeting as a city councilor in Stillwater. Please vote. <laughs> adjourn. <laughs>